What is up everybody? Long live your turtle here and today I'm going to show you from start to finish the construction of my top of the tank turtle basking platform. I got a lot of re great requests from my previous video and I'm not going to give all the credit to myself on building and designing this. A lot of the general design came from a video I watched on YouTube which was I believe his name was Liam Lunchtray so thank you so much Liam. Uh, I made a couple modifications myself uh, we're putting this on top of a 75 gallon tank and I'm gonna post the parts, the cost, and the general sizes and dimensions of this thing in the YouTube video itself in the description. Otherwise, without further ado, let's start constructing this thing. Let's go to my AutoCAD model and check it out. Alright everyone, I drafted up this turtle basking platform design in AutoCAD and I really like to do this just because it's hard for me to visualize any of these designs, these DIY projects on notepads with 2D drawings and or terrible 3D drawings, trying to throw dimensions and trying to change things on the fly on a piece of paper is difficult. However, on this program it's very easy to see exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're building. It's really easy to change anything that you want to do to this. So let's go over the general aspects of this design. So, just from really high level perspective, this basking platform that you are going to build is going to sit right on top of your 75 gallon tank and close to the middle you're going to have a ramp that will start and it, so that they can get out of the water and onto their basking platform with zero hassle and they can easily slide right back in. Um, and you'll be able to see them from this viewing panel here it's made of two acrylic sheets that you can slide back and forth and that also gives you some access into the tank uh, without reaching all the way over the top. So that's the basic gist of this basking platform. Um, let's take a look at the general structure. We have these large cut wood pieces that are going to wrap around and create the walls of your basking platform. The front uh, viewing panels will be held by this frame that you'll make with thinner pieces of cut wood and I also have a nice cross brace in the center that is helpful for you know structural support but also to hold any sort of uh, covers you want to create to fill in this area once you're done with your construction. Um, taking a look at the back important design feature I want to note is you'll notice the walls go to the end of the trim of the tank however there's going to be a gap here where your platform is not going to be covering um, and the walls will essentially be kind of recessed in and this will provide access to your intake and output tubes of your filtration system or a wire for your heater and uh, any tubing for aeration or any other sort of um, accessory that you use in your tanks for your turtles. Um, that's important because if I didn't do that then there would be, I'd have to drill holes either in the tank or in the side walls and that just adds complexity to your project. I want to keep this as simple as possible but also keep it elegant. So taking a look around at the other corner of the back you'll notice I actually go over the side of the tank and that's because I don't put my tank right against the wall and I have a little space, a couple inches that I can use to in instead extend my platform itself that way I can I can fit my nesting area in here and then have a, a correctly sized ramp so my turtles can fit walk up, they can either bask on the basking area over here while I have some basking lamps or they can keep walking around and get into the little dirt box that I'll have as a nesting area. And what you'll notice here and what you'll see of the final design is I actually added some some walls here so that the turtles can just climb out of the nesting box and then fall into the ramp. They actually have to walk back around so they'll slide safely back into the tank. Last design feature I almost forgot about is there you'll notice I had trim going around the two sides and the front of the tank and the purpose for that trim is simple it is to provide an anchor for your basking platform while it's sitting on top of your 
75 gallon aquarium so that's like five feet off the ground for me you don't want to knock into this uh, platform and have it fall off the tank and onto the ground especially if there's a turtle in there that'd be catastrophic so let's get to constructing this thing let's get this done and again check out the attachment that will have all the details of this model all right team it's time to start construction on our 75 gallon tank above tank basking platform and I'm here in my parents garage yes I'm lucky enough to have a garage with lots of tools that my parents own uh, a lot of you won't have that but we'll get to that uh, however first things first I showed you the blueprint that's where we're gonna get all our dimensions from and the first thing you'll need is the wood you're gonna use to create this structure uh, it's gonna be the walls it's gonna hold the sliding panels uh, it's going to basically be a majority of the structure you're going to build here. So, the first thing you want to pick up, uh, I go to Home Depot, you can probably get this at Lowe's or any other sort of hardware store, just make sure they have similar sizes if you're going to try to copy what I'm doing. I got mine from Home Depot. So, based on the blueprint, you'll need three of these common boards. Uh, you'll find these in the lumber aisle and it will be in stacks and they come in varying qualities make sure you get a nice quality very little bend in the board this is going to be a pretty long board you probably need at least half of this so just make sure it's pretty straight you also want to make sure there's there's knots here just make sure there's not a ton of knots or gouges because of knots in the board you want a nice solid board that's going to be painted but it's going to be in your living room in your show area wherever you want this tank you want it to look nice and you don't want it to deteriorate under years of moisture. So you just want a good quality board. All right, so you'll need three of these four foot, so 48 inch by one inch by uh, 12 inch boards. That is the label of the dimensions on this board. However, these are construction dimensions. So you really need to keep in mind when you buy these, it's actually three quarters of an inch. It's actually uh, 11 and a quarter inches wide and it's about four feet long. So keep that in mind when you're uh, put, taking all your measurements into account. I did on my model. Uh, so you'll need three of these. These will be the portions, uh, the wall portions of your basking platform. Uh, board number two. This is a cedar board. It's eight feet by uh, two inches by one inch. That's the Dimensions you'll get if you look online or if you go to the store and read the card. However, actual dimensions in my hand right now are about eight feet, uh, three quarters of an inch by one and a half inches. So, you'll need three of these. Last but not least is a two by two foot by quarter inch piece of plywood. Um, this runs at about five dollars and uh, I did not use this in my first basking platform and uh, I'm gonna try to integrate this into my new design. Uh, I'm gonna cut it to suit when I get there. Alrighty, got these boards. We gotta mark them up. Make sure we got all the dimensions from the blueprint onto these boards. Get them to the saw and cut them up. That way they're ready to assemble into our beautiful blasting dock. Let's talk about how you can cut these. So I'm lucky enough to have my parents' garage. Uh, and I live pretty close by so I can just Take the trip over here, uh, I can use their table saw, which is a fantastic cutting device. These are pr pretty big boards to deal with, so it's easy to have a nice table to spread out and push these boards along to cut through that 11 inch piece. Um, otherwise, you could use a common just circular saw, which is basically a handheld saw, pretty big blade, you just push forwards, you need a nice tabletop surface for that. Um, again, you'll probably need some sort of garage or at least some outdoor space to use this tool but if maybe you live in an apartment or you just have no access to any sort of power tools you could probably get away with just a handsaw um, it wouldn't be very easy for these wider pieces but you could do it it won't be as clean uh, but i think it's definitely doable if you don't feel comfortable using any sort of saw or doing any sort of cutting at all then i totally suggest using your services at your local um, home depot or lowe's or any other store like that you might use because they typically will 
um, provide you with cutting services. Sometimes they'll charge you, sometimes they won't, depending on the person you might talk to. So, if you're going to cut this on your own, I have to give the obvious safety bulletin here. Um, these things are loud, they're sharp, and they're just overall quite dangerous. Uh, be very careful using these machines, know how to use these machines. So, you promise to be careful, I promise to be careful. Let's get down to business, let's start cutting, here we go. All right, so we got the sidewall pieces all cut out. These are the 11 and a quarter inch tall pieces. That will constitute as the side and back part of your basking platform. It's time to cut the smaller pieces. That will make up the front and the trim portion of this awesome basking platform. Let's go. All right, so we got all of our main pieces of wood cut out. Uh, we can start assembling this thing now and I'm gonna leave the piece of plywood till the end, because I'm gonna kind of cut that to suit, but we can start assembling. I'm gonna first start with the bigger pieces to really solidify the structure we're gonna use here, and then I'm gonna go with the front pieces and then the trim pieces. So let's get started with the back panels and the side walls. On this next step, we're going to be screwing together the back walls of the platform. I'm going to um, drill pilot holes for each screw, Every screw is one and a half inches and they're gonna be using number eights. And this will ensure a really tight fit for these corner pieces. And um, I'm gonna sink the screw a little bit below the depth of the wood. That way I can fill it with putty and then when I paint over it, it doesn't look like there's any screw there at all. And um, so I'm gonna do three screws on each edge to really make that a secure edge. And I'm gonna do that all the way around the back. That way I have a nice uh, built back structure and then we're going to head on to the front. So, let's do it! Quick note, I'm not going to fully tighten these screws. I'm going to make sure that I have this whole back piece put together before I um, sink these screws all the way in, make sure all the measurements are right. Uh, that way it's less going backwards and reworking these if, uh, if there's anything that's stri slightly out of line. Um, on to the next piece. We're now going to do the middle support piece. All right, edge number two down. Next up, final back piece. Quick note on this edge here, I'm going to be putting a cross beam um, to the front portion of this platform. And so I can't put a screw where I'm going to attach this cross beam. I want to be able to get to the screw and I don't want that cross beam to get in the way. So I'm going to be putting these a little bit lower down just to take that into account. So be aware of that when you're constructing this. Third edge complete. All right, this last wall piece is ready to go on. This is the slightly trickier one because you're gonna not have an edge to be able to guide yourself. You're gonna have to measure out to where this board should be attaching to this piece uh, near the second third. So we're gonna measure that out and then we're gonna screw it on and we'll have our whole back piece complete.